Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious of their workers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withered like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily uh, thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust in also in him and he'll bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth the righteousness as the light and the, and the judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any way to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight in themselves, delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow, their bow, and cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be upright conversion. I'm sorry, upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord shall uphold the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, into smoke they consume away. The wicked borrows and does not pay back, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For such as be blessed in him uh, shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old, and I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and leadeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves judgment, and forsakes not his saints, they are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. <clears throat> Psalm 37, uh, once again, and um, I just have to say that uh, it's good because there's a lot of people kind of getting caught up in, uh, and worrying about the political situation the financial situation, people losing their homes and jobs and things, the answer is to push further into the Lord, period. You can look into the whys and wherefores of what's happening, but it won't make any sense. Only the supernatural trust of the Lord and the, uh, the result of that trust, the Lord will bless his people in a time of famine. He will bless his people financially in a time of famine. He will not leave the righteous, his children, in the hand of the wicked who seeks to do harm. 
for personal gain. That's what the Satanists do. The world, the, the, anyone who serves the devil looks for people to harm to boost themselves. And it's horrible. But that's basically, in a nutshell, what their system is. Doing harm to others to boost themselves. So when we see the uh, bouncing ball of the political fight, the ideological fight between communism and free markets, between freedom and slavery, when we look at all the different things that are going on upon the earth that look terrible, World War III, Russia, China rattling their sabers regarding Syria, and um, you know, on and on and on. Just remember, the Lord laughs at these people that have wicked plans. And a lot of the plans they had, well, just an example, the Saudis pumping extra gas to lower the price of oil so Obama can get elected. But now oil is going back up. What happened to those plans? It worked for a while, but now it's finding, and not, not that, you know, my point is the intervention. In other words, we will do this cynically to get him elected. And now uh, they can't do that. In other words, that plan didn't work. We're going to bring the New World Order in with Obama. Oh, yeah? Well, he's been exposed right and left due to the social networks. And everybody is calling him out and disgusted and just basically spitting on the guy. I mean, his popularity is falling through the floor. There's only useful idiots and dupes who still support him. And these are just kind of like the same people in any society that are uneducated, uh, uneducated in history, you know, mind controlled by Marxist professors in their colleges, whatever it is. And, uh, or just they think the Democrat Party is uh, now the progressive party. And they'll, so they'll go with that no matter what, because they were brought up that way by their parents. And they didn't realize that what had happened to both the uh, um, liberal side of the Republican Party and the leftist side of the Democrat Party, those elements, the progressive element, took over both parties, which is what gave birth to the Tea Party. In other words, there was a response. So the point I'm trying to make is, you know, you can't just say, oh, this is it. Sort of like Alex Jones. This is it. The, the New World Order is here. It's all tyranny. Uh, hunker down in your bunkers, get your ammo, and get ready to fight it out. Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily yet. Because there is blowback. And what never gets counted for in these conspiracy sites is they never talk about the resistance, the blowback, the, uh, the exposure, the supernatural things that happen that blow the plans of the enemy or they would have already had their new world order years and years ago. What, what stopped it? Psalm 37. Um, they make their plans and God laughs at them and holds them in derision and just and mocks them. They think they're going to get their way. Oh, well, sure, Russia and China are going to veto about Syria and Obama's going to get tough and threaten nuclear war. Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. You may say it or see it on a conspiracy blog. World War III is here. It's all going to happen. They're going to haul off the Christians in shackles and cut their heads off. That's a very real possibility at some point. And the Bible says so. But not necessarily when people think it is. Because a big part of this is um, every generation is that, is that training up of the saints and the resistance against the evil, against all odds, and yet God delivers them in the midst of their enemies and blows the enemy's mind. This is something that delights the Lord over and over and over again. This is what delights the Lord over and over and over again. So, you know, yeah, the financial situation may be down, but it doesn't mean it's down forever. Um, the Lord will not, I think what's important about this uh, psalm is the importance of saying, I have not seen the, the seed of the righteous begging for bread. Okay. I have not seen the seed of the righteous begging for bread. You know, I was, I was uh, young and now I'm old. And in my whole time, I have not seen the seed of the righteous begging for bread. Doesn't mean times won't be lean, but I've never seen the, I have never personally seen the Lord not take care of his own. I have never seen the Lord forsake his own. And I've been looking, I've been watching. I, I hear people coming up to me and saying, I'm forsaken, I'm doomed, I'm... And they, they get in their own understanding. They go, well, like, you know, well, are we losing our home? We're losing this, we're losing that. And, 
you know, we, our, our hopes are dashed and all that. I'm like, well, what happened? You're not walking the supernatural walk. You're living in your own understanding and you're listening to the news media programming you saying it's doomed, it's all over, it'll never be good again. And you're just buying into that and then going, I'm forsaken. Wrong. Wrong. The Lord works in ways that are mysterious that we can't understand. And he will bless you in ways that you're not going to be able to predict will happen. He's going to hold back stuff that you think is going to happen because you saw it on the news or the conspiracy blogs. And yet it doesn't happen over and over and over. It doesn't happen, does it? I remember back in 2002 when I ran into the information of Pamela Schufert of the uh, of uh, all the shackles and the cars and the report that they're going to confiscate the guns, round up Christians, put them in ovens just like in uh, Nazi Germany. I don't doubt that she had re legitimate research on that. And I don't doubt that she had witnesses that uh, testified to it over the years. But um, the fact of the matter is those people have always been around. These are the wicked and the evil that seek to do wickedly to the righteous and to the innocent. God laughs at them. <laughs> sure, you can have your trains and your shackles and your guillotines, but it may not necessarily get rolled out. And I guarantee you on the day if it does get rolled out, if that's what we are called to do, it will be a joyous celebration. People will be competing to have their heads lopped off. See which one gets to go home first. <laughs> There'll be that supernatural strength to be able to, to you know, a, a change of consciousness regarding the whole thing because the gates of heaven will be opened up and everyone will have a glimpse and everyone will be going, I want to go with you, Lord. You know, I mean if that day should happen in our lifetimes. Um, they have worked tirelessly to get that thing done, to fulfill scripture and prophecy in the book of Revelation. They have worked and worked and worked and worked and worked to get that thing done. Um, but somehow they've just missed it. I mean, I remember in the 80s, they wanted to bring it about, didn't happen. The 90s, they wanted to bring it about, didn't happen. They thought, okay, the year 2000, that's it. Didn't happen. 2001, bring in the false flag terror attack on the... On the uh, by the by, the kind of amorphous Al Qaeda, whatever on the uh, trade towers, um, their follow through did not occur. It was supposed to occur right then and there. Martial law was supposed to be declared no more presence. Now Obama's going to declare martial law. Yeah, he's going to do that in October so that there is no election. Well, we've heard that before. A lot of people, I think, look at Obama like he's an unbeatable beast. You know, you can't stop the evil that he represents and the people behind him. I'm like, oh, oh yeah? Ever heard of Yahweh Elohim God? Who laughs at uh, Obama and company? Now, I have no doubt the Lord will allow the evil to go max, to max it out, but he'll take care of his own every step of the way despite it. For example, we're in the worst depression since the Great Depression, and yet why is it that uh, that our people are, you know, still in communicating? I mean, it's weird because some people are not, um, you know, surviving it, but in a sense, people are surviving it. Yes, I understand they've lost wealth, but have they lost daily bread? Everyone's lost wealth. That's the whole goal of the communist regime is to take the wealth away, not to redistribute it, to give it to themselves, the elites, and put everyone else in a form of slavery. You'll get your porridge from the government and uh, your kids will be owned by the state. Of course, that's always been the plan. You know? But I see a lot of people waking up and when people wake up, when the lights are on, the light is a great disinfectant you know, sunshine is the ultimate disinfectant because it just blows the whole plan because without secrecy, they can't do a thing. Nothing. Now, with the tragedy that occurred in, with the mind control victim in uh, Colorado, in Aurora, Colorado, um, you know, they're, they're going to try to make a gun control thing. Oh, he bought that all legally on the internet. We got to stop that. No more internet sales of ammo, they'll say. They'll try to work the edges of it. And the fact of the matter is, people are saying louder and louder, a gun-free zone is a kill zone. 
If you have a, that theater was a gun-free zone and look what happened. The right response is you better be armed because you may have to defend yourselves because the government ne ne can't necessarily be there to defend you. That's the right response. Gun-free zones get people killed, period. Period. That idea more and more is beating back the liberal argument we should ban all guns and in other words, we should strip all law-abiding citizens of the ability to defend themselves so the criminals can just have their way with them. That's what the, the, the idiot left who are just the most retarded people you'll ever meet and sick in the head completely. But that's their um, backwards take on everything. Everything they touch, they destroy. Everything they get involved with uh, economically, they destroy. Every program that they make keeps people in the ghetto. Everything they do creates poverty, lack, pain and suffering for all people. Everything the left does is misery for the people. And what's happening is that people are waking up and realizing the left means Satan. Right means righteousness. Even though, even though they try to portray right-wing zealots as you know, the Dick Cheney sat satanic, you know, they're there sacrificing children and drinking blood and all that. Well, look, there's evil on all sides. I'm just saying in general, the philosophy of the right is that the rights for the people come from the creator. The philosophy of the left is that the, the rights for the people come from the government. Period. If you know that much, you know the right and the left. As far as extremists on each side and Satanists and whatnot, sure. They're in every aspect of society. It's Satan's world. And you bow down to the devil, there's perks for that. So you're going to have people on both sides doing that. You're going to have perverts on all sides. And remember the pedophile scandals of the Franklin cover-up? Yeah, sure. That was, those were Republicans. Okay, now, you know, I'm just saying, in general, the philosophy of the right and the philosophy of the left is man-centered, the right is God-centered. That's, that's, you know, theoretically in a perfect world. So when people are Satan-centered say, and they say, I'm on the right or I'm conservative, no, they're not really because it's a, most of the people that are, say, on the right politically who serve Satan are progressives, meaning they're in the same boat as those on the left, and that doesn't count. That's all counted as left. Left-handed path in uh, India is the tantric path in Hinduism, which involves satanic ritual and satanic ritual abuse. And the right-handed path is more like asceticism, devotion to God. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's living clean and all that. And the, those, the, it's very simple when you say left-hand path versus right-hand path. Everyone, everywhere in the world knows exactly what you mean. They know exactly what you mean. They try to obscure it and politicize it and make you confused. But basically, righteous, righteousness versus um, people trying to be cool by selling out their souls and getting a perk and saying, ha, ha, look what I got. And look at you stupid people who are uh, holding to principles. <laughs> You're losers. <laughs> well, that may be a temporary situation, but the Lord says in Psalm 37, don't be jealous of those people that look like they're prospering. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. They will try to make you envious, like, look what I got going on. I'm a rock star. And look, look at you. You, you still got Jesus going and you, you, you're still backwards and you're like uh, Elmer Fudd, you know? I mean, you're just the most uncool idiot there is. Oh, gee, I'm jealous of you. I want to be cool like you. You do come on in. The water's fine. And I've seen plenty of people do that, go from fool to cool in about two seconds flat. Not a good idea. Not recommended here at the Zephyr Port, Ever. But then again, I know who my father is. And they don't know who their daddy is. Their daddy is not Satan because Satan will ultimately consider them to be useful idiots in the beginning. And then once he gets his way, he'll kill them all. Because his goal is to kill all humanity. Period. But first he wants to use humanity to get his way. And then he'll, you know, force God's hand to wipe out humanity. I think that's kind of the game that's the cynical game that's afloat at all times. So remember, rest in the Lord, wait patiently on him, and fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because the man brings wicked devices to pass. 
Those who prosper by doing bad things to others will be killed, period. And their families, no, it goes beyond that. Their kids will be killed. The curse will visit the generations and wipe them out. Look at uh, Sylvester Stallone's kid. Boom, gone. His seed was cut off. He was not protected. I'm using him as an example because he's a perfect example of someone who sold out for fame and fortune. He's just a typical example. He's not like the example or some special case. He's typical of Hollywood. Typical. He's just typical. He had a great result. He had a lot of talent, you know, sure. But I think right now he's searching his heart and soul deeply to figure out why this happened to his son. I'm consider what I'm saying prophetic. Uh, this is not out of my mind. This is out of my heart, out of my spirit. I'm saying this. He was taken perhaps in a way to uh, save Sly from uh, going off the cliff to remind him of what's really going on. Um, you know, and I'm sure if people hear this who are tied to Hollywood and all that will be very angry that I said that. But, you know, the only way I could know that is if God whispered that in my ear right now, if he told me that. That's the only way I would know that. How do I know he's done wicked to get his way? Because Hollywood itself is a system that basically you have to do wicked in order to get a good result. And you have to do that wicked in the sight of men so that they have something on you. It's not enough to sit there and, uh, you, you know, give sexual favors. It's more involved than that. It's a criminal cabal. And, um, you know, when I say criminal, I mean, you know, there's a lot of tentacles. I mean, to pornography, human trafficking, uh, slavery of every, every, of every sort. And it's a cesspool. No, the police won't do anything about it because, they, you know, they're in on it too. I mean, it's just, it's a mess. Then what can the police do? There's protection of powerful people. The point is, is a typical guy to have Stallone's success would have to um, be one of them and be accepted into their family to prosper. Well, maybe the kid woke up. To me, it looks like the kid was troubled. He woke up, took an overdose of pills, whatever. But it was like, there's a trouble in, you know what I mean? The conscience, conscience was coming clear again. By the way, this example of a kid committing suicide of a famous person is pretty, um, you know, that, that happens quite a lot. You know, let's just use that as an example of, you know, and if you want to say it, you know, you want to say that, uh, you know, I'm just speculating, fine. Fine. The point is, is it if, let, let, me, let me put it more into speculation. If he did um, wrong to get good, if he, did, if he was part of the satanic system, then something like that is very potential, could potentially happen because the Lord says, he will cut the seed off the wicked. Those who do wickedly for gain. I have no way of checking Bryce Taylor's book, but Stallone's in there. And uh, those people that are mentioned in there are doing wicked. They're, they're actually, in her book, nothing is really there that, that was a surprise or shock to me. It was all pretty typical what she wrote. Yeah, it may have been sensational to a lot of people, but it was pretty typical the way the game works. And, um, you know, no one can know really the whole personal thing with uh, Stallone, his kid, the Lord, the... the, 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 the lifestyle. I'm saying, yes, it's a possibility that the seed was cut off. Could be because of, uh, to save Stallone himself. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I hope he seeks solace and maybe he can call Chuck Norris up. I don't know. You know, the point I'm trying to make is, um, I've seen that a lot in Hollywood, not with as famous a situation as that, but I've seen that a lot where you have the, uh, well, you know, uh, Marlon Brando. As much as we like Brando, as much as we like Stallone, yeah, that, I, I love a lot of people who are on the satanic side. And I pray that they give that up. And when things happen, I see the cause and effect and I try to warn that please don't keep going down that path because bad things will happen to your kids. The Lord's not gonna protect your kids if you're, do, if you're part of that system. 
I know, this is, this, I guess this is hard for people to get their minds around. Well, let me just read it from the Word. For yet in a little while the wicked yet shall not be, yea, thou that diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. The meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow and cast down the poor and needy to, to slay such as be of upright converse, conversation. Their sword shall, I keep wanting to say conversion there, but I mean, that's interesting, huh? Their sword shall enter into their, their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that the righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. That's now, folks. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. That's now, folks. But the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of the lambs. They shall consume into smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borrows and does not pay again, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. Well, I just uh, think this kind of reiterates it. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. That means the seed cut off. Cut off means the family cut off. I can't tell you how many people I've seen buy the farm because they, uh, they've heard the word and they didn't heed to it. They knew meaning, they heard the call to become separate, finally, and they didn't do it. And then their children suffer and the next generation suffers if it's around at all. Okay, I'll use me as an example. In my own family, it got down to just basically me. I had no big family. It got dwindled down to me. And I have a daughter who's escaped. And I repented to the Lord and that, you know, kept me alive. He did what his word says here and I've been blessed. Uh, if my daughter doesn't have children, then the seed would be cut off and she might not. I don't know. But I can say that my seed is not cut off today, but it should have been would have been, had there not been a total 100% dedication to the Lord. And it didn't mean that I wasn't going to get the slings and arrows of the generational curse. I still get them, still got them. But it means the Lord would give me the means to survive. Has it been pleasant? No. I remember it was recounting today in 2010, how I was going through a death rattle from being poisoned and almost died. And I was shaking in the sun with fever and sickness and uh and it was just about it but somehow i pulled through lord informed me what was happening it was witchcraft and uh food was spiked for the purpose of murder but i survived what most people would not have survived that that was the point so i could praise the lord because gosh father you let me live where most people would have just died right there then the wicked all around me were shattered and they perished away and they went away and they fell away and now they no longer exist in, uh, you know, and um, ouch, it, it's, if you're born into a family that's done wicked to get a, to get a, 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 a boost, a financial result, whatever, those scourges and things will be visited upon you no matter how much of a lamb you are. You know, I mean, because just like if you murder someone, you're still going to do the time, even if you repent to the Lord, you're still going to go through that experience. Well, the kids of the, of the unrighteous and people that have done unrighteously to gain riches um, will also be scourged by the Lord. You don't escape the punishment and it's just punishment. Even though I didn't do anything technically, my forefathers did. And so it was right that I be scourged. It was also right that I survive, but not without scars. The price had to be paid. Do you understand? 
A lot of you personalize it. And then what have I done? And it's like, I've got the Lord's forsaken me. No, it doesn't necessarily mean you've done anything. But you can also look at your generations and say, have they done anything? To where that reap what you sow um, uh, implacable law would be visited upon your head? Absolutely. We're all in that category. Bad things happen to good people, not so much because of the, you know, people don't look at the generational curses. So you could be a good person, have something horrible happen to you. They go, oh, it's so unfair. It's like, no, not if there has been something in the line that had to be paid for. The Lord is perfect justice and it goes out over generations. So where it looks like innocent people are being har harmed, we're not looking at the big picture. What came before them? Who were their parents? Who were their grandparents? If we would do that, then it would be, oh, okay, I see. That, well, that's what I've done. Oh, okay, I don't feel like so much a victim anymore. In the East, they have a really a great concept of karma, which is reap what you sow. But there's this thing about working off karma. In a past life, you were evil. Well, let's think in a past life was your parents. That was your past life, right? Your seed and your grandparents and your great-grandparents. Did anyone screw up back then? That goes down the line, doesn't it? Right? In a general way, uh, humanity, and in a specific way, families. Um, so I became, in a way, the witness of all this, and I've seen it firsthand, and I can say, I have not seen the Lord forsake his own. But I, I also don't see people getting out of the general human condition of bad things happening to good people along the way with the Lord protecting them, even though they're scarred and hurt. He doesn't exempt us, is what I'm trying to say but he leads us into all good things eventually by and by for those who stay the course. The course meaning not losing the faith. The time to not lose the faith is when those bad things are happening, the worst thing you can do is say, the Lord's forsaken me. The best thing you can do is start praising the Lord at that moment. That's where the test is, not when things are going good. When things are going good, anybody can be with the Lord. When things are going bad, that's your test. And bad things are going to happen to you good people out there. And it's not your fault, but your seed has been involved. Understand? You were corrupted that way. So you deserve, but the Lord will protect you in ways that are beyond belief. Like I was made a witness of all this and a witness of Hollywood and a witness. And I've seen all the people go off the cliff who were laughing. And ah, I got it made. And I've seen all that. And I've seen them all fall. And I've seen many of them dead. I've seen their seed cut off. But I've never seen the ones who went with the Lord, I've never seen their seed cut off. It, yes, they suffered. But I haven't seen their seed cut off and I haven't seen their seed begging for bread. I haven't seen anything that is at variance with this. And when I say begging for bread, I don't mean making a choice to go beg for bread. That's a choice where you could have done something else, but you decide to go out and be a beggar. That's fine. That's not what the, the psalm is saying. It's saying, having no other choice but to beg for bread, having no other way but this... Uh... And here we are with the government, which is now trying to make everyone dependent so that Obama can win and bring the communist global communist revolution. And that's his part to play. So it's very important to put as many people on food stamps as possible so that they can get as many willing dupes and idiots as they possibly can. And that's how it's been done in the Bolshevik, in the revolutions in the past in China and whatnot. So they're doing the exact same method. Doesn't mean he's going to get his way. And the man is an absolute idiot on a personal level. He doesn't know a thing. He's just like a robot. He just is programmed to do just that. And that's all, that's all he's about. Other than that, he's an empty suit. There is no depth to the man. He's an ideal, not an ideologue, but he's, a, he's, he's programmed to be exactly what it is. And there's no variance or no thought or no wondering and no e evolution in, in thinking. There's no change. He's just programmed to do one thing and he does one thing over and over and over again from the time of his youth. He gave up, but when he was at Punahou School, he uh, gave up, sold out to the devil at that point. 
and has been following the path of Satan ever since, which is communism in the modern world. Uh, the, there is no difference between Satanism and communism. They're the same. It's just an outward man. It's a political manifestation of the inward satanic reality of selling out conformity, groupthink, collectivism, um, and uh, human sacrifice for the the purpose of boosting the uh, uh, the few. There's no such thing as a communist. Uh, country. There are totalitarian states with the elite eating caviar and riding around Rolls Royces where the, uh, where the rest are poor and they worship the elite, period. They're afraid to wake up because if they wake up, they go to prison. And that's um, something that is not necessarily a done deal here in America. So many people I talk to think it's over. And that's what they want you to think. They say, it's over. Why are you still looking at politics? It's over. I told you it's over. Look away from that. Let's put our eyes on the Lord. It's over. Well, yes, let's put our eyes on the Lord. But nobody can say it's over. Nobody can say it's this or it's that. The Lord will keep working it in mysterious ways that will mind boggle the people who think they know what's going on. I've talked to quite a few of them lately who've been very hurt. They've been very hurt because they thought that they had it all wrapped up. That, yeah, the Jesus bus would come and boom, that was it. And the rest is going to go up in a nuclear conflict. Well, yeah, maybe it will. But now we see no man knows the time. No man knows the day. And if enough people wake up and repent, they can't do anything. And um, I see more and more people waking up. There's more people today that realize that a, that a gun-free zone means a kill zone and realize that the Democrats are backwards in their thinking and retarded and that they, they, anything they propose brings human misery. You know, I say Democrats, what I mean is the new left, the progressives, which are the communists of old. I mean, it's the same, it's the same thing. They promote atheism, statism, gun-free zones, and human misery. Um, the health care would be pure human misery. Everything they propose is human misery. Leads to slavery and totalitarianism. Never seen them fix a problem with the ghetto, war on poverty, war on drugs, every, everything a failure, completely, utterly, totally, and always will be. Until the people wake up and reject it. Well, if the people wake up today, that would destroy the plans of the wicked and God would be laughing at them. And, and he may let it go through. And, you know, the chip and the mark and the guillotines and the whole bit and book of Revelation and then, you know, he'll take his vengeance later on. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever his will is, he's perfect. It's his will, I go with it. I suggest you do the same. You're never going to do better than God in terms of direction. The bottom line is, again, we don't know the time, we don't know the day. Always be ready, as the five wise virgin story tells us. Don't be the five foolish virgins who are not ready with their lamp oil. Be ready at all times to meet your Lord. That should be an automatic from day one anyway. It should be like you're a believer, now you have to, now you have to get ready. You should have been ready. This, nobody gave you a guarantee that this life, this tenuous thing, is, is guaranteed to you forever. You know, nobody can make their home here because everything passes away here. We're here for a flicker of an instant and it's over. So I guess what you must do is just realize who's in control, who runs the show, and serve him. Satan does not run the show. That's simply a lie and an illusion. He'd like you to think he does. He'll do anything he can to make you think he does through his people. But ultimately, it's God we have to answer to. And his word we have to answer to. And his laws we have to answer to. And his way we have to answer to. And Christ we have to answer to. And Jesus, Yeshua, Adonai, Yahweh, the one we have to answer to. And this way of the word we have to answer to. 
and why we did or why we didn't, we have to answer to. That's the only answer we're ever going to have to have. When, we're, when we are dead, we are, in, we are judged. Mainly, what side are you on? <clears throat> but we better get that straight. And that's really the story of the five wise virgins would, would be believers now and have no doubt as to whom they serve. And when they, in other words, when they go to meet the Lord, they're ready because in their heart, they've already accepted him and submitted to him and that to live as Christ, to die as gain. That's, that, that's how we're, ju- it's almost judgment's already done. Because if you believe the opposite, you're here on your own and you're kind of worshiping your family and you're going to live through your kids or something, you uh, are in for a rude awakening. You're here to realize it ain't about you at all. And your kids will be cut off anyway. And there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, if you want to go that way of lifting your own anvil, uh, go ahead. But it's going to hurt you, your, 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 your family, your children, your grandchildren. It's going to destroy everything in your line. Even if you're not a believer in Satan and you're just trying to do it your own way, that's still a sin unto God. He wants total fidelity. He, he will not accept you being your own God for a while. If he really wants you, he'll just break you and give you a disease or something and let you deal with that. Most diseases like cancer and stuff saves people's lives. Why? It saves their souls. It causes them to stop and think what's really important. You know... You thinks it's going to live forever. And like you could be, you know, and they try to conform to what they think is cool, what the media is programming them to do. So it's like, okay, you got to, you know, let's say it's, you want to be cool and you got to be sort of, you know, libertine sexually, you know, omnisexual, whatever. You can do some drugs. You got to dress like this, talk like that, join these causes, save the animals, save this, save the do, you know, save the tree, whatever. And they get you all involved in all these things where you think you're okay. But the one thing you don't have is the Lord because all those things basically are um, satanic um, snares. You know, you think you're doing good, but your works are filthy rags and you've made no difference. But you think you're doing good and it, may, it agrees with you because you can still be your own man, your own woman, your own boss. And yet in the end, you know, you're having to hold the whole world up on your shoulders. And uh, so you jump into the collective feeling you could share the burden. And then you get down to the real nitty gritty. If you really want to be accepted, you're going to have to bite the apple and be part of the criminal network or you won't be accepted. When I mean, when I say criminal, I mean literally criminal. I don't mean criminal to God in, in his, by violating his law and being a sinner. I don't mean being a sinner. I mean literally criminal. The world system in Babylon is literally criminal. You sign on to it, you're, on day one, you're a murderer. Even if you didn't murder anyone, you are part of a situation that condones murder. So you are seen as a murderer, ultimately in the spirit. That's why you can't be there. Because God will judge harshly and to the death these people. Oh, they may not see it in this generation. It may be their kids and their seed cut off. But it's going to happen. And I've seen it over and over again. Saw it in my own family. Saddest thing in the world to see that. To see what looked like a good thing be just taken down point by point by point by point, person by person until there was no one left. That's a horror. But I've seen it not only in my family, I've seen it in all the families where there was um, you know, rich and powerful people that did bad things to get those riches. I've seen them. And I've seen them cut off. And so I had one guy that, that used to say he was a Christian, but he wasn't one like me. He used to laugh and mock at me, you know, because um, he was like, in the world and of the world, but then he'd have his Bible study. You, you know what I'm saying. You know the type. Oh, he'd laugh. He goes, I don't 
want to be a monk like you. He called me a monk. He said, you're like a monk. I don't want to be a monk like you. I want to have some fun. And then he became the town drunk. Then his wife divorced him. Then he lost his country club membership. Then no one would deal with him in business. And now he's a derelict. But it was because he, uh, let me explain. And I prophesied over him. It's because you know the word. And he, and, and he, but he wouldn't heed. And he would laugh and deride those of God who really felt followed the way. Because they wouldn't be acceptable to society, you know, which he was. But look what happened. And I believe this is all the Lord breaking him for a good purpose. Ultimately, I believe he will give his heart to the Lord because he does know the Lord. But look how the Lord's dealing with him. He's literally begging on the streets. Laughing. I don't want to be a monk like you. Meaning I'm saved. Thank you very much. Don't worry about my soul. And every affiliation he had, every club has rejected him. Not because he became a drunk, you know, a public drunk, which he did become. But it all turned on him. See, he knew, but, but it's supernatural what happened. He knew the Lord. He knew the word. And I kept telling him, you work it out with your dwell. His dad was alive. You guys work it out. You both know the Lord. You got to work it out. You got to work this out. But he wouldn't listen. And he wouldn't listen. He wanted to do it his own way. And when I had a Rima for him, he rejected it. Not that you should listen to me or something bad's going to happen to you. Not that. It was more like a more personal, um, you know, kind of like, well, you're still connected to Babylon and you need to, you know, the Lord's calling you out. And he, he, well, you know what? Here's what's happened. He's now been separated. It's really, in a way, a blessing. All he has to do is knock the drinking off and realize it's all been a blessing and go with that. He's going to be the monk that he laughed at with me. He's, he's going to be that monk because there'll be no other choice. He is a survivor. He is strong. And I think he will make the right choice in the end. I think he will come to understand everything that's happened to him. Unless he goes to AA, then they'll convince him it wasn't really Jesus or something. But I saw that, and I was really kind of amazed with that because this is a guy who you'd think had the world by the balls. You know, you would just not think, you know, ever that, you know, but you see, it was that sliver of him that knew the word of God and knew God was real. It was that. That specifically, I think, was the thing that broke him because he still loved the Lord, but he was confused with the world and the Lord has ended that confusion now. Now, it's manifesting as him being rejected, town drunk and derelict. No one wants him around. Being rejected by society. And they're not offering him a way back in. So there, there's some... see. They can see the Lord in him, obviously, or Satan knows that. So he's trying to engineer all this unfair stuff to happen when he didn't do anything to deserve it in his own mind. I won't go into more. There's some funny kind of ironies about this, but, you know, it's, it's just an example of a guy who knew the word of God and who did not heed it completely. And I see the Lord trying to bless him by breaking him, is what I see. And he's already now, he, whether he likes it or not, he's separ- he has come out of her, and he is separate. Maybe it's been that it was engineered in such a way that he became the town drunk who was thrown out. But he's out. <laughs> and um, what he does with it from now, I don't know. I probably won't hear again. But it's just a great example of, you know, there's none of us gets away with anything. You might as well give it up to the Lord Jesus Christ right now because, you know, you know the people that were in the um, Aurora thing who were running into the theater and pulling people out, uh, there was a Christian guy who said, I have no fear because I've got Jesus. So I'm, I'm flinging myself in there and I'm not afraid. I'm going in and getting people. You know, that, it was literally, he could have died. This guy that was, I don't know if you saw him on the news, 
but he just had, you know, he had the spirit, he had the Holy Spirit, and he was just running in and pulling people out, right and left, most other people were afraid. And I know, it was, this was on Greta, you know, I know Greta, being a Scientologist, um, I just felt in my spirit that Greta was really listening to this guy. I think so. You know, because he, he professed Jesus Christ on the air as the thing that gave him the power to go do the supernatural. And I know that impressed her. I don't know what she'll do with it. She didn't seem like a, much of a Scientologist to me. I don't see that in other people. When they're on their own, I, I see them staying away and wanting to save themselves. I don't see this guy professing Jesus on the air on Fox News or whatever, running into the theater, pulling people out. And he said, I didn't have any fear because I knew I had the Lord with me. So he, he, just like David going up against the Philistines, he went in against all odds and he was a hero. But not because of him, but because of the spirit in him that made him capable of doing that because the other people that didn't have that spirit, they were incapable of, of um, you know, saving the others. They were saving themselves. That's what I'm talking about. Come on. Give it up. That is the only way to live. If you live in fear of your life, fear of the new world order, fear of uh, the political situation, fear of the financial, uh, fear of the wolves at the door, if you live in all these fears, fear of the police state, of the drones, and blah, 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 what kind of life are you leading? You're, you're dead already. You're already dead. You're just being pigeonholed over here and corralled over there and led over here. You're like the mouse in the maze going to get the cheese. They, they have all your walls up. They're the ones who are hedging your way. You'd rather have the Lord hedge your way. He will make a table for you in the midst of your enemies. You'd be surrounded by the Satanists and walk straight on through and even sit there and have a picnic. If you have the Lord. If you show fear, yes, they'll jump on you. If you show the Holy Spirit, they'll be jealous of you. And they'll want that. Everyone wants to overcome Everyone wants that supernatural power. That's Jesus. That is the source of that power. That's where the Holy Spirit comes from. Any question? People used to say, well, I was arrogant. I'm going to get mine. It's like, no, I'm not arrogant. I'm just boasting in the Lord. And that his power saves me. And if that makes me seem arrogant, it's because he's the most powerful thing there is. It, it, and so if I boast in that, it's not me boasting my personal power. I have no personal abilities like that. And I know it. I know it deeply. I was broken to the point where I saw how weak I am. I can do nothing to help myself. Nothing. Not a thing. But he can make me a new man every day. regardless of my history. In him, I'm fully emancipated. In the world, sure, maybe I'm a loser. In him, I'm fully, 100% cool, if you like. I'm eternal, baby. I'm, I'm, I span all time and space. You cannot get that anywhere else! Now, I've been ministering to my brothers who've been almost praying for horrifying, catastrophic events to happen. Thank God the Lord discounts those prayers. He says, little boy, and we're all little boys, you don't know what you're talking about. Come, Lord Jesus, come does not mean let's have a nuclear war. You know what I mean. I'm really bummed. I don't see any way out. Let's have a nuclear war. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Huh? Am I right or am I right? And now you're realizing it ain't gonna come on your command anyway. Thank God you're not God. Thank God you're not God. Thank God I'm not God. Thank God God, God just kind of pats you on the head. <laughs> it's like the little boy that wants to fight the, the, big, the big guy 
the big adult and, and you know, and the, and, and the big adult's holding him by the head, you know, at arm's distance so the kid can't punch him, you know, and he's punching the air, right? Yeah, you're bad and you, you want justice and you want, you know, you know, you want this thing flipped. Right? You want this thing flipped and justice done and the wicked to pay. I know. But see, you're going to have to get over that. You must be flowing free and in love despite what they've done to you. That's Christ. Yeah, so you got a ways to go. I just said that a bird hit the window. But then he flew off, he survived. Any question? Oh, come on. Here's the main question I get. How do I know I'm serving God or I'm hearing from God? Well, if you have to ask that question, then you're serving God and hearing from God is the answer. If you think you've got it going on, you may not. Uh, but when you feel un you know, unsure, most of the time you're in the, you're in the zone. But that's going to make you praise and seek him more. Am I really in your will, Lord? It's, you know, where are you, God? I never left. He's inside you. He's in your thoughts. Does the enemy get to attack you? Yes, because you're flesh. Yes, the enemy gets to say you're a piece of you know what. The enemy gets to say, um, gets to come to you as a seductress and tries to get you to do perverted things. Yes, the enemy is trying to mess your thoughts up and get you to, uh, to hate, to lust, to envy. Oh, yeah. Psalm 37, very specific. Do not envy them. I got over envying rock stars when I found out they all had to sell out to the devil. And then when they started coming clean, and some of them were just you know, bona fide artists, and they started waking up, they ended up getting sacrificed because they had already made their bed. And, the, and the, them getting killed you know, through overdoses or whatever. But that was actually in a way, um, if they had woken up, then probably in that twilight zone before death, they probably repented. But, you know, we reap what we, what we sow. If you sow to the devil, he has the right to take you out if you start waking up. I don't mean waking up in that way. What I mean is, you knew the choice between God and the devil. You chose the devil. Now you start realizing that's not what you really wanted, but you, got, you still have consequences. Choices have consequences. Elections have consequences. Things we decide to do have consequences. If you make a, to, to be a real Satanist, to be on the in crowd and be cool, you have to know God exists and reject him. It's not enough for you to be agnostic and, and then go kind of with the sat satanic way. You have to know God exists and then rebel or else there's no real pop. So that's what I mean about rock stars. You know, a lot of them knew, you know, like Jim Morrison's a great example. He, um, he had a lyric in a song called Cancel My Subscription to the Resurrection. He knew there was a resurrection. He knew that Jesus existed. He knew the word existed. And he decided to go with the devil, a conscious choice, and he paid the price. Do I hope he repented? Of course, I hope everyone repents. I hope Jimi Hendrix repented. I hope Kurt Cobain repented. I hope... Lane Staley prevent. I hope they all, all, you know, got it in the end. Most of the older rock guys, you know, the guys in music, who all sold out to the devil when they were in their, you know, teens and twenties. Now they're my age and um, or a little younger, <laughs> but I'm very young at heart. So I kind of like them in a way. It's strange. I don't seem to age in you know, in the spirit of things. I seem to age physically, but I don't seem to age in my mind. But anyway, um, they agree with me, you know? But some of them are scared because they made their living off being cool, you know? Being, hey, come on in, man. Hey, man, let's have a do, man. Let's get down with the devil. Let's find out what's really going on. You know what I mean? And then they kind of go through all that and, Jezebel's running the rituals and they all partake and they all just go deeper and deeper and lower and lower and 
you know, and, and, and but a lot of these people repented and they know the way now. They they realize they made a mistake then and they repented and they're still alive. I run into so many like that. They still try to act cool like they did when they were kids. But inside they're it's not the same. And I'm kinda of looking at that like a revolution for Jesus Christ. In other words, the word's going out among the rockers. Oh count on it. Great example of that. Um I think Bands like Metallica, uh, Dave Mustaine, the, uh, the black sheep of Metallica went on his own and other people like that. I think they're all waking up. I think they're all awake. They may not public be, you know, just go state and wear it on their sleeve. Because <laughs> then they run into like the whole, the Michael W. Smith problem. What's the Michael W. Smith problem? Um, or the Franklin Graham problem, or the establishment church problem, or the Rick Warren problem, or the CCM problem, or the, you know, the Christian network of music of CCM being run by the same labels that run, you know, um, even Ozzy Osbourne has woken up. They may not state it publicly, but they all kind of eventually, you know, you get, it's the default is really going to be God. He's ultimately going to be where we have to rest. And they're afraid of losing their status and losing their coolness and, and all that. And I'm like, you got to be kidding. All you have to do is look at a picture of Mick Jagger when he was young and then look at him now and you realize, you know, come on, it's not cool. <laughs> you know, it's not cool. But, but these people would not be leaders in Christendom. I, when I mentioned the, the Rolling Stones, I, I know for a fact that Keith Richard is, is constantly listening to preachers and he's, he's constantly, he's embattled over this whole thing. And it's because they made their living off promoting the satanic and conformity. And it's odd that, that their rebellion is actually conformity in the world, in every aspect of the world, in every fraternity, sorority, guild, and uh, every established thing on earth, the Rolling Stones promoted it, thinking it was being, and people thought, oh, that's I'm being rebellious. It's like, no, you're being like everybody else, but you don't know it yet because you're kids. No, you're kids. You think you're, you, you were the first one that ever discovered that. Mm. Let's think about that for a minute. And then you grow up and then you realize, oh no, I'm just like everybody else. And then you grow up and realize, well, this is not pleasing. And then you keep going and then you realize, you know what? Like Bob Dylan realized, you know, you got to serve somebody. It could be the devil or the Lord, but you're going to end up serving somebody. Anyone in their right mind who gets older is going to want to serve the Lord, period. If they have any wisdom at all, wisdom means that you would have reverence toward God because otherwise you wouldn't be wise. And there, there's just nobody. that I mean, There are people, I guess, you see touting atheism when they're older and God knows, you know, I, I would hate to be them. I would hate to think that I live in a random universe and I'm just here um, self-created and uh, it's all on my shoulders and you know life doesn't mean anything anyway and boom. I would hate to be in a situation where I would answer to no one. I would hate to be in a situation where I was accountable to no one. I would hate to be in a situation where my life was not planned from day one. Because I see the Lord's work in my own life from day one. He called me out when I was three. He let me know that I was different and, uh, you know, and it was never going to work out. Um, so he was my default. He was the only place I could go. So that was a great blessing. Oh, I, cur I called it a curse. I, I was like, what's wrong with me? I'm too weird. They don't accept me, blah, 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 blah. And it was like, no, nah, it's got nothing to do with me. It's a... It's a um, species situation. It's Lord creates those for himself and those for the devil. He creates those for the earth who are earth dwellers and he creates those for the heavenlies who are uh, multidimensional and eternal. And um, he, I, I don't know why he does all this. You'll have to ask him. He wants to do it all, obviously. And there has to be light and dark and good and bad people and good and bad everything or else it wouldn't work. So he's got this world going that's just like that. Can you dig it? Anybody. I don't care what you've done, you still have a chance. And those of you who have uh, become rich and famous 
from your misdeeds. You just let the Lord lead you the rest of the way and you'll be okay. You know, and don't bow your knee anymore to Satan. Don't, 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 don't get involved in any of those shenanigans and get away from people that expect that of you and start over. And Lord will bring new people. And he, you shouldn't be addicted to other people anyway. That's another satanic thing. I'm addicted to other people. What they do and don't do affects me. No, it's what we do and don't do affects us. The idea of other people or a society to conform to and all that is largely illusory anyway and does not matter. What they think of you does not matter. And, and there is no they to think of you in that way that you're thinking. That's all a mind game in your head. They're not thinking of you. They're not thinking. They only think of themselves. No one is thinking of you like, gosh, he's, it's, it, it's just not that way. It's super. People are led by the nose around doing well, whatever they do. The enemy wants you to think you're being singled out and rejected or whatever because you're not cool anymore. And being afraid of that, you keep trying to act like someone you're not. So you can stay in what? So you can still have a place at the bar and you can sit there and they'll go, hey, cool, brother. What's happening, man? Is there really someone there asking you that? Can you prove to me that even though you say you went there last night, can you prove to me you were actually in there doing that? Can you prove to me those people were really real? Because a lot of times I've gone to establishments where there was nobody but demons in there in the form of humans, and then I've gone where there were humans. But I mean, I can't with 100% surety tell you that those people were actually there or that I actually went there. I can't even tell you what I see in the mirror. I don't know. I got to go back to Father, the Lord. I have to. He has to d define for me uh, you know, whatever it is I am, I have legs, then walk. Thoughts, make them be your thoughts because my thoughts only lead to confusion. My ways only lead to trying to do good things, but then they fail. His way always leads to something blessed. And even if I can't understand it, after a while, it makes sense. And as I look back on it, I go, oh, I thought that was a curse, but now that turns out to be another blessing. Well, I guess I'm just not going to question you anymore, Lord. Your way is perfect and, and, and my way is imperfect, so I'm going to go with you. Because the outcome is always good. Psalm 37. And um, don't worry about the wicked. God tells you very clearly what he's going to do with them. And uh, it's not going to be a pretty sight. You're not going to be, want to be part of that when that scourge comes down. You want to be there saying, there but for the grace of God go I, and you want to be there with a word of ministry and encouragement to change direction, absolutely. But the way of Satan always leads to destruction for all people to fight. You ask any of these people that look like they're survivors, you know, of being cool. They're never going to be big in the kingdom of God like on the earth because they, they, they took the... Uh, the, the bait, you know, so they're going to be like at the back of the bus, but at least they'll be on the bus. Sometimes false Christianity will raise up a celebrity, but usually they hit the wall, especially when they see what other Christians are like. <laughs> and they become so discouraged. Oh yeah, God's never, see, he's going to have his way with you. You're never going to be able to hang your hat anywhere. But hanging your hat with him, you, you don't have a hat. He is the hat. So by going that way, you can't lose. But we humans keep trying to establish a, a way, a club, a clique, a thing. And he's going to break that every time. And he's going to cause people to have division and arguments. Because he's just not going to let you have it. He's just not going to let you do that. And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I will see you. Next time, whenever that is, Zeph Daniel, roving reporter of the Zeph Report. I hear it, I'll let you know.